everybody. Welcome to True Crime Paranormal with the Psychic Sisters. I'm Christy Brower here with my sister, co-host, and partner in crime, Katie Weaver. Hey, Katie. Hello. How's it going? It is going well. Good. Glad to hear it. How how have you been? We haven't what? seen each other for a few days. No, we haven't, which is weird. I'm good. I'm really good. We uh, Yes, we went to Montana over the weekend and... Uh, checked out two different colleges for my daughter to play softball at and learned a lot. It was fun. She played, she had an opportunity to play in a scrimmage with one of the teams and practice with the other. And it was really fun to see her out there with these college girls, just totally holding her own. She just looked like she was part of the team. That's awesome. She didn't, she didn't struggle at all. It was really fun. Not surprised. That's really cool. Also fun to see her play with a lot of girls that are on her level, you know, mm -hmm. because they see how they really elevate each other. Yeah. yeah, it was fun. She learned that she definitely did not like one of the schools academically, mm -hmm. uh, loved both of the teams, but academically she wasn't so much on one of the schools and liked the other one quite a bit, but awesome. al also kind of decided maybe neither one of them are the right academic fit. So we're still on the hunt, but we'll mm -hmm. see, you know, it's a, it's a lot to decide, you know, it is, so. it is, it's a big choice, big, big mm -hmm. decision. Well, that's but we cool. had a lot of fun. We, we laughed a lot, you know, it was really fun to watch the, the coaches work and the drills they were running and the way they interface with the girls and just a lot of good stuff. So yeah, good. I absolutely nothing to complain about. How That's about you? Cool. Uh, really good. We, uh, we went, had a weekend trip also. We went to Jackpot, Nevada. You may or may not know, but Southeast Idaho is only about two and a half, three hours away from a, a tiny little, uh, Northern corner of Nevada where there's a tiny little town called Jackpot where it is literally just casinos and, and sagebrush that's the, it that the i feel bad for the people who live there because they run the casinos <laughs> i mean yeah, it's this is all it is um but it's pretty fun we had a good it is time fun. yeah i did pretty well i definitely did the best of all of us i came home i was only i gambled the entire time we were there and i was only down about 45 dollars because oh, i won a lot so yeah i'll take it I'll take it. We had fun. We haven't really but, gone and done anything like that since before the virus and the lockdown. And no, haven't we're, dared. Right. We're all fully vaxxed now. And so it just felt good to, you know, it's still weird. Like everybody's masking and, you know, those are it's required in the casinos. The casinos don't have any buffets open uh, for meals. Those are all shut down still. And there are less uh, slot machines because they're all they have to be social distanced, which was, it was oh. all kind of weird. Like it's, we've been going yeah. there for a long, long time. And so it definitely felt different, mm -hmm. but it was fun. We had a good time. Oh my gosh. We've had a lot of laughs in jackpot over the years. Oh, year. we have, we have, and we did, we had a, we had a well, fun good. time. Yeah, it was really great. So, but I'm glad to be home because hotel beds suck and yeah. it's just nice. It's nice. It's yeah. nice to go away and it's also nice to come back home. Oh, for sure. For sure. Well, yeah. good. Well, great. Yeah. Sounds like we both had an awesome weekend. Well, I'm excited to hear all about our case. Yes. So this is a cold read for Katie. So I'm going to give Katie some information about this case and then have her give us a cold read about what she thinks really happened because this is an unsolved case and this is a listener suggestion. So thank you for that. If you like if you have cases you really want us to, to know about, please go to truecrimeparanormalpodcast.com. And if you scroll down to the bottom of the page, you will find a little form to fill out to suggest a case for us. And don't worry if we don't get to it right away. You know, we will get there. We have a mm -hmm. lot of suggested cases and we're working on them. Yeah. But, you know, remember, suggest is a case that's unsolved because yeah. that's the kind of case we like to cover. We mm -hmm. like unsolved cases unsolved or solved but suspicious some mm -hmm. of you guys will come and say look at this one do what you think yeah I don't have a is with this that. really I right think. yeah yeah well look well that's kind of how this one is so okay this is the case of the death of ellen ray greenberg look how beautiful she is isn't she gorgeous she was an elementary school teacher in philadelphia Oh. She was a first grade teacher, I believe. Yeah, first grade teacher. So 
This was in January of 2011. This was near the end of January. There was a big blizzard in Philadelphia. And so school was let out early that day because of the snow. Okay. So after Ellen made sure all her students got home, she came home early. And she lived with her fiance, Sam, okay. in, in an apartment. She came home. Sam, just so you know, is a, he's a television producer. He's okay. worked for NBC and golf.com. Um, so they hang out for a couple of hours. Then he says he's going to the gym. So he goes to the gym. He's gone an hour or so. When he comes back home, he can't get into their apartment. Hmm. The the swing lock. So you know those locks that sort of go across the door? Yeah. The swing lock is locked. And he said that was really weird because normally they only did that at night. Yeah. And because of that, he couldn't get in because you can only lock the swing lock from inside, right? Sure. So he goes to the um, building security and he says, hey, I need you to help me get into my apartment. And they say that's against our policy. We won't do it. So oh. he asks them, and this is, we're not sure if they actually went with him or not. But it, one account is that the security went with him and witnessed him kick the door in to get inside uh -huh. because he had been texting and trying to reach Ellen like, Hey, mm -hmm. I'm trying to get in the house. What's going on? You know, yeah. with no response. And so he got pretty worried. Sure. So when he gets the door open, Ellen is there sort of laying up against the counter and she's been stabbed a whole bunch of times and she's quite clearly dead. Oh. And he, did try to do CPR briefly, but she actually had a knife shoved four inches into her chest. And so oh my God. he didn't really know if he could do CPR. Yeah. When the paramedics got there, there was nothing they could do either. She was gone. Yeah. So, so, of course, the police come. They, they're puzzled by the door situation. Mm-hmm. And also, they just, they immediately jump on this idea that this is a suicide. A suicide? Yeah. Because no one got in. There was no, how could anyone get in? It, the only way to lock oh that door God. was for her to lock it. And there was no evidence of anyone coming in through a window or anything like that, right? Mm -hmm. So, they... The Philadelphia Medical Examiner's Office looks at the body, says there's 20 stab wounds, oh, 10 in the front of the body, and get this, 10 in the back, 10 in the back of the neck and her head. And they say, mm, this is a homicide. Yeah. <laughs> you think? And so then the police come out and say, we still are investigating this as a suicide. And so then the medical examiner's office comes out and says, we're changing our cause of death. We're changing it to suicide. What? Yeah. Okay. So they oh literally God. are wanting Ellen's family to accept the premise that she stabbed herself to death with 20 times. And stabbed herself in the back 10 yeah. times. Stabbed herself in the neck and the back of the head. Like some of it nicked her spinal cord some of it actually went in and hit her brain oh for the love of God. and then okay. she just buried it in her chest four yeah. inches right sure. seems seems legit right that just seems like the most logical option doesn't it right. oh my god okay. so here's the thing because they are so stuck on this being a suicide they don't really like they don't actually do like a full forensic no. investigation of the apartment there's, only, there's not that much blood, which you would think right. would be a lot of blood. So some, you know, some, her family members are like, somebody cleaned up. Well, we don't know if they did because they never came in and did a luminol test or anything to see if there was evidence of the blood being cleaned up. This It's so, so ridiculous. Okay. Yeah. So, um, basically... <laughs> In February of 2011, the police were like, yep, suicide, boom, done, over, see ya. 
and just Close done. The Close the case. They had found some searches on the inter on her on her laptop that indicated that she was searching. Get this, painless ways to commit suicide. I don't think stabbing yourself twenty times is a painless way to commit suicide. Mm -hmm. Well, okay, so her parents are just like, what the hell is going on? Mm -hmm. So they hire their own uh, forensic pathologist. His name is uh, Cyril H. Wecht. Okay. And he reviews, <laughs> reviews the case. I mean, I'm not sure he'd even have to review the case. You might just have to look at the first page. I don't know. Yeah. And determine he was strongly suspicious of homicide. And he also said, I don't know how they wrote this off as a suicide, right? Everyone's mm -hmm. like, what the hell? Right. Then they also bring in forensic scientist Henry Lee. And Henry says the number and type of wounds and blood stain patterns observed are consistent with a homicide scene, not a suicide scene. So there's one big issue here is whether or not one of the stab wounds penetrated her brain. And the police said that they had this forensic pathologist who said that the stab wound actually nicked her, um, one of the stab wounds in the back actually nicked her spinal column and or spinal cord. And when that happened, she went numb. So then she could just stab herself a whole bunch more times because she didn't feel it. That's literally what they said. Okay. Wow. So of course, Ellen's parents are like, oh, what the hell? So they have this reviewed by um, another forensic pathologist who said that the injuries, the stab wounds to the brain and spinal cord would have caused severe pain, cranial nerve dysfunction, and traumatic brain injuries. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. no. She right. could not have done this to herself. No. They also find that the police... This is so ridiculous. The police had quoted neuropathologist Dr. Lucy Rourke that there was no wound in the back of the head and that that didn't really happen. And she's the one that said that it, she just nicked her spinal column and then she was numb. So, so then she could just kill herself some more, basically. Uh, <laughs> well, um, when somebody actually, the Philadelphia Inquirer actually interviewed her and she said... Um, she actually never saw that body and confirmed that she has no record of the examination. So they used her name, Whoa. but she never saw that body. Oh, my God. So we have all of this stuff pointing to... A what, murder. What the yeah. hell? Right, a murder. But pointing to what with the police? Like, right. What the hell? Just right. laziness? What? Okay, so right. then in 2019, Ellen's parents file a civil suit against the Philadelphia Medical Examiner's Office and Dr. Marlon Osborne. That he, he's the pathologist who did the autopsy and basically changed it from homicide to suicide. So um, they want to change the manner of death to homicide or undetermined rather than mm -hmm. undetermined. What the hell? Um, citing new information and the fact that Dr. Dr. Osborne admitted to changing the manner of death at the insistence of the police. Wow. Yeah. So they did use some new technology and I've seen this before. It's called photogrammetry. It wasn't available in 2011. It is now. It creates a 3D anatomical recreation of her wounds. Mm -hmm. And it demonstrates that not all of those wounds even could have been self-inflicted. Mm -hmm. The other thing that they find is Which that there is were... bonkers to me. That they have to take these steps to prove this. In the first place, right? In the first place. They also find that, guess what? There were two knives. So Ooh. there was the knife that was buried in her chest that came from the house. She had been cutting up fruit in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. There's another knife. So there's a, a serrated edge and a non-serrated edge. Mm -hmm. The wounds have two different kinds of knives, even though there was only one knife found in the apartment. Wow. So it's sort of just making its way through the courts. 
In January of 2020, the Philadelphia Court of Common Pleas allowed the case to proceed past the motion to to dismiss stage. Mm -hmm. And so the trial is set to start sometime here in 2021. So it hasn't happened yet. But here are a few other things that are not as common knowledge. And I have to say, I have to credit Tatiana Santana, who wrote an article from Medium on this death, who she did a really, really good job. And she's given us some information that we didn't know. Mm -hmm. So first of all, um, on the day that Ellen died, she talked to her mom on the phone. Mm -hmm. She seemed fine, seemed very normal. Not like she was going to go home and stab herself to death. Right. You know, they were just talking about re regular everyday stuff. Mm -hmm. um, oh, so Ellen had been having some mental health issues. She was having a lot of anxiety. And she'd actually talked to her parents about that she was really seriously considering quitting her job and moving back home to live with them. Even though oh. she was living with her her soon to be husband Sam, right? Yeah. So they wanted her to go see a psychiatrist because they were really worried about her. Yeah. And she did. And she was diagnosed with adjustment disorder, which is something that happens anytime you go through a big change. And sure. here she was living with her fiance, going to get married, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And also anxiety. And yeah. they put her on some medication, antidepressants and anti-anxiety meds. Well, one of the big reasons that the police decided this was a suicide is because she was on medication that can cause suicide. Like oh, she was on Zoloft. Oh, geez. Well, yeah, that and is just, true. You know, it, the millions of Americans that take Zoloft are right. all just jonesing to stab themselves 20 times. Right, right. I mean, yes, that can be a side effect of the medication. Her psychiatrist, however, had never indicated in any of their notes that she was suicidal. Right. And, and parents were like, she's really anxious. This isn't, she was never suicidal. Right. She never, you know, expressed anything. So another thing to know, apparently there are all kinds of videos on YouTube about how to close one of those swing locks from the outside. Ah. That there are ways to do it from the outside of the door. Mm -hmm. And so it is not as though that was, you know, for Impossible sure somebody sure. couldn't do that. Right. So I was curious about Sam because there's so little said about him because, mm -hmm. hey, you know, she just stabbed herself 20 times in their apartment. Um, but let's, so he said that he got security to help him. Security says no, that they were not there, that none of them helped him break down the door. The other thing is, is the, the door wasn't actually kicked in. The lock had, was missing a screw, like something had happened to it. Mm -hmm. But that was it. Like, it didn't look like a door that had been kicked in. There wasn't damage. So the door frame wasn't injured. It wasn't broken. No. Yeah. So we have Sam telling these stories, but we don't know. Um, excuse me. So I guess Sam didn't really want to do CPR on her and said to the 911 operator, do I really have to? Which some people found kind of weird. Mm. She had a knife sticking out of her chest. I mean. Right. I, I think I would have probably said the same thing, you know. Yeah. Out of fear that any pushing on her would just push more blood out of her. and. Yeah. Right. Right. She had no defensive wounds at all. Wow. And one a, a police officer, a retired police officer that has looked at this case said, you know, this looks like a blitz attack to me. Attacked from behind, yeah. stunned so quickly they never had a chance to fight yeah. back. So just a few other things to note, because I talked about a lot of this already, but I wanted to talk a little bit about this. So Sam has never done a single interview about her death. Mm -hmm. He has just completely disappeared. Mm -hmm. Apparently, Sam kind of acted strange at the scene. Because, uh, first of all, he lied and said that Phil, the security guard, was with him when he kicked down the door. And Phil okay. says he did not. The other thing is that Sam was wearing boots. 
which they thought was weird because he was supposedly at the gym. At the gym. Mm -hmm. um, before he called 911, he called his, two other numbers. He called his parents and his uncle. Wow. And the uncle was an attorney. Okay. Kind of weird. Mm -hmm. So they were already on their way there before 911 was even called. It, a lot of people thought it was very strange that there was so little blood at the crime scene and a lot there's a lot of question about whether or not he actually cleaned up and cleaned mm -hmm. himself up because no one even looked right and this is the weirdest freaking thing no one even looked right how do you walk into a scene like that and go oh clearly a suicide right right the weirdest yeah. stuff mhm mm so one of the things, okay, so they, they had this, the police had this idea that she was searching about suicide on the internet. Mm -hmm. Well, her parents have had a forensic specialist, whatever, look at her laptop. Mm -hmm. And what she was actually searching for was the side effects of her medication. Well, oh. it brought up articles about suicide and various things because sure. she was searching about. So it was not that she was searching about those things. It was just that yeah. that's what came up based on what she was searching on sure. that there's nothing indicating on any of her devices she wasn't yeah. telling anyone she was thinking of harming herself not there's nothing no nothing so i want us to take a little break okay and when we come back i want you to tell us what you think about is this a suicide is this a murder any thoughts on who did it any thoughts on why the police have covered it up or just didn't give a damn sure. or whatever okay okay so, we'll be right back. Okay, so we've been talking about the Ellen Greenberg case, and we know that it has been officially ruled a homicide, which seems very strange. And a suicide. A suicide, I mean, sorry. Yeah. A suicide. But I mean, her family. Just stating what should be obvious. So. Right, right. Her, her family is fighting through the courts to uh, make the med medical examiner's office change that. And uh, mm -hmm. But in the meantime, it's been 10 years. And right. there's, there's been no, no investigation. Yeah. So, Katie, what do you think? Give us your well, psychic read on Ellen and Sam and what in the actual hell happened here? Okay. So, good on her family for fighting so hard for her. I wish more victims had families that would fight this hard for them. Right. But uh, good on Ellen's family and, and many condolences to them. Wow. I think it would be an easy answer that Sam did it. I don't think that Sam did it. I do think that Sam knows who did it. Wow. Okay. I believe that Sam was involved in some illegal activity. And that this was some kind of a retaliatory action against him. I don't think we know nearly as much about Sam as we should. Mm -hmm. As who he is as a person. The police made it easy on him to just drift off into the, uh, you know, into the shadows and into the sunset without any recourse at all, without, you know, at least trying to get some harder truth out of him. Right. Uh, I do think that he wasn't home initially, but I do think that he knows who killed her and he knows why they killed her and that this had everything to do with him. Mm. You know, on the blood, I actually don't think he cleaned it up. I just don't think she bled that much. Okay. I don't. I don't see him doing that. I feel like he, it, it's partly true to form. He really did come home and was unable to get in. I think he really did kick the door in. You know, obviously it didn't completely destroy the door. I'm guessing their little, uh, you know, slide lock thing wasn't all that uh, high quality, you know, mm -hmm. and he busted out a screw and that's all it took to get the door open. Mm -hmm. 
but uh, you know, and then he found her dead and he made the phone calls. He knew she was dead. I mean, calling 911 first or calling his parents first or his uncle first, it didn't matter. She was dead. It was mm -hmm. obvious she was dead. I don't think he had any question in his mind she was dead. She had a knife sticking out of her chest. There was no doing CPR and he knew that, you know. Sure. Um, but again, I'm convinced that he does know who killed her and why they killed her. Mm -hmm. But it was in his best interest to just keep his trap shut. Mm -hmm. I think that he may have been the one that kind of started leading the police down the path of suicide, you know, mm -hmm. with his own doubts. And he had know. said something about, I think she just fell on the knife. The uh, knife that went into her chest, basically. Uh -huh. That she just fell on it. Sure. Sure. L as you do, right? <laughs> right? Yeah. You know, um Tatiana, what's her name? Sorry. Oh, Tatiana Santana that wrote this article that kind of got us a little more information about Sam said that she did some research and between one and three percent of suicides or suicide attempts are mm -hmm. done with a knife like it's right. not it doesn't happen other than like slitting yeah. your wrists but like right. stabbing yourself no no that's too hard it's too messy and it's too painful well you'd get exactly one stab in and be like holy shit i can't do this right she also a lot of the stab marks on her chest were hesitation marks Mm -hmm. So they didn't go in very far, like somebody who hadn't done this before or didn't know what to do or just, mm -hmm. you know, they weren't. But it, but really, there was there's some evidence there that it was two people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I don't think that's surprising at all. I do think they had some rigged up some way to close that lock. I don't think that's really much of a, evidence, you know, mm -hmm. they, you know, that was a part of their plan. And at any rate, you know, but it. it who would stage a crime scene as suicide with all of those stab wounds? I mean, you could say a suicide crime scene a lot of different ways that would be a whole lot more credible than this. Right. I don't think it was intended to look like a suicide, but I do think that it was easy for Sam to just start putting some doubt out there as he talked to people at the scene. Mm -hmm. You know, that maybe she just fell on the knife or maybe someone, you know, threw out, you know, could this be suicide and him go, well, I mean, she's been seeing a psychiatrist, you know, and, right. you know, it was easy to throw doubt out there. I don't feel like this was covered up by the police for any seriously nefarious reason, as in, I don't think they were covering for Sam or for anybody else. Mm -hmm. I think they were being lazy. And then I think when it came to the medical examiner, they just didn't want to get a black eye out of it. You know, mm -hmm. they didn't want to look like they had screwed up. And so they went, look, just, you know, just call it a suicide. And so the medical examiner's office, who, you know, has to play nice with the police to some degree and work with them, decided mm -hmm. that it would be in their best interest to just do that. Mm -hmm. It's insane. And honestly, were it not for her family having the means and the intelligence and the integrity to keep pushing forward, it would have worked. Yeah, A lot of families would have just gone, well, I think that you're full of shit, but what can I do? You know? Right. right. I, yeah, I, you know, we've talked about this before, but we have a cousin that was clearly murdered mm -hmm. and his parents were totally unwilling to do anything other than just accept it. Yeah. And we had some cousins that tried to, you know, question the police about it and tried to work a little more on it and just hit every brick wall. There was just nothing. Yeah. It, it seemed as though there was nothing and, and had, you know, maybe had we, you know, teamed up and hired an attorney and things like that, we could have changed the flow, but I don't know, you know, it's hard to say, it's hard to say, but uh, I feel like in this case, again, it just, uh, there was just no effort. It, no, it, not uh, at all. And I do feel like there was plenty more evidence in the apartment. Had they looked further, had they tried harder? Yeah. I feel like there was more to find that would have helped them understand who Sam was truly and how this could have been linked back to him but nothing yeah yeah wow. wow okay well thank you i i appreciate that and i you know i really resonate with what you have to say here um you know she was beloved in her family in her community at her school oh yeah 
and this was a huge loss and to just oh, yeah discredit her like this and just really treat her death like she just really didn't matter yeah it's awful it's been a terrible terrible thing for her family but you know we're going to keep an eye on this and if we see some updates yeah. on on that uh lawsuit we will let you know because if they really do force the medical examiner to change her cause of death to homicide there is no statute of limitations on homicide in pennsylvania and so they will be able to then start investigating this as a homicide. Mm -hmm. Good. I don't have any evidence anymore because they never got any, but maybe who knows who somebody saw something. Right. Maybe Sam will say something, you know, we don't know. Maybe someone has said something, you right. know, that they just have written off because no, 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 this was just a suicide. We don't want to muddy the waters, you know? Right. And so it's possible. I think it's very possible that they have received some conversations in the past or some evidence that they just, uh, you know, filed in the trash can because they didn't want to have to eat crow on this case. And, you know, yeah. that I'm holding yeah. out strong faith that the courts will see it her parents' way and open this back up. Me too. Me too. So we will keep an eye on it and update you as we see things change because that was supposed to, that's supposed to be this year. So hopefully yeah. we're going to see that soon. Good. Well, this is our first case of the week. Yeah. And uh, we have many more coming. We have a real doozy of a joint case coming tomorrow and our MMIW case on Wednesday. We have our Wednesday night live stream at seven, which is our case update. And oh, we have some exciting news for you. And then on yep. Thursday, it is the Psychic Hour, also at 7 p.m. Uh, Mountain, uh, and that is our Psychic Show. It's a live stream. You can come chat with us, come get a reading, that kind of thing. So, you bet. And some pop-ups over the weekend. So we have lots of great content coming this week. So yes, be we sure do. to stay tuned. Yeah. If you want to send a case to us, go to truecrimeparanormalpodcast.com. And down at the bottom of the page, there's a form you can fill out and send us a case. We keep all of the suggestions that you guys send us and we do them as we are so guided, you know, sometimes oh, we just yeah. feel like a case is like, oh, we have to do that. This is really important right now or whatever. So don't feel bad if we haven't gotten to your case yet. We will. We yeah. have a big list. Yep. But we want to. We're looking. Mm -hmm. yeah. We are. Most definitely. Well, you know it. We are True Crime Paranormal with the Psychic Sisters. Thanks for being here. Have a great day. Take care. Mm -hmm.